Anyway. I, I got to see that picture. We got to um, see I it, dude. I watched Now You See Me, uh, Burt Wonderstone, and The Prestige in one plane trip just because mm-hmm. I was, fe- was feeling very thematic. And yeah. I watched them in that order. And it's one of the strangest experiences of my life. Burt yeah. Wonderstone, by the way, don't, was really don't, good. Don't, 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 Travis, you can't take it back. Okay. No, it was, Travis, it was, it was oh, you can't take back. You can't take back if you say it. Ooh. Oh, another close one. It was a very good <laughs> plane <laughs> movie. No, but plane, if you say, but if you say it, it's on the podcast forever. It's like on the feed forever. <laughs> but no, I'm just. If you, if you say it, like people, movie. it'll end up on a wiki like article about us. Like, and my name will be on it too. So, but for a no. plane if, movie, if, for a movie to watch on a plane. Sit back. If you do, if you do, what I'm saying is like, if you do, it, people might like people can't tell our voices apart, so they might think I said it. So let's not. It was a good movie. I I will say that the after I saw the previews for the incredible <laughs> Burt Wonderstone starring Steve Carell, yes, and Steve I, Buscemi, that movie was so specifically targeted at Travis. They should have begun <laughs> every line of the fucking trailer narration with Travis, comma, just like directing it. <laughs> Travis, this fall, Steve Carell is going to be a fucking magician yeah, just, in a comedy. Just after every joke, they would turn and just like look at the screen and wait for Travis's laugh. Listen, and then once, I'm and, not saying it was a good movie. I'm saying it was a good plane movie. I enjoyed watching it on an aerial plane mm. where my emotions were heightened because the extra oxygen pumped into the cabin and mm-hmm. I had other people around me. Like they were watching God knows what, like maybe the, uh, what else would have been on a Twilight or some shit. And I th- said, you know what? I'm on this plane. This is my life now. I'm on this plane. I think I was flying to Scotland for my honeymoon. And what better way to start your honeymoon than to watch the um, Bar Wonderstone? I liked it. It was a tour to Steve because uh, it had Steve Buscemi and yeah, Steve lots of Carell. Steves. Uh, so uh, many Steves. Can I say one last thing before we go to the Money Zone about watching movies on planes? Mm-hmm. My if new I tra- had my druthers, I would listen to Travis talk about the incredible <laughs> Bart Wonderstone. This is, this is my ASMR. Yeah. Is here Jim Carrey plays defend. like a Chris Angel-esque character that he, I think he does it's very, very well. Good. Um, is it, uh, guy, guys, Alan Arkin's in it. This is an important act of archiving because Travis is statistically speaking the only person who's ever seen the incredible Bart Wonderstone. So it's, it feels yeah. like that by like this is the only way that it, I mean this shit's not going to be like the AFI is not going to scoop this one up and put it in a vault. No, like they're going to have to. That's good. Uh, this is going to go in the Library of Congress along with Travis's fucking complete recollection of this series Entourage. Anytime. Speaking of spoilers, Anytime you Alan hear Arkin. About Entourage. Alan Arkin in that film plays an elderly magician who inspired Burt to become a magician. Excellent. And uh, it says in the Wikipedia page, Holloway was originally scripted to die, but the studio felt that audiences would have too much of a connection to the character, and mm. so he remained alive. Wish they now, did that, that in is, some of my other motion pictures. That's buck wild on a couple levels. One, you thought that maybe this one character in the incredible Burt Wonderstone would engender quite a connection to the audience. That's one. Two, that's a pretty buck wild way of thinking about drama. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's a pretty that's a pretty insane way of thinking about like how uh, um, emotional resonance is created with it. I don't know if I don't know if people Be- like it. I don't think people will like it if Macaulay Culkin dies in my girl. I think it'll make them sad. So he just gets stung by bees, but then he's okay. I do like the reverse the reverse logic of that statement, which is that any time a character dies in a movie, it's because everyone thought the audience wouldn't like them. Yeah, so, yeah they like, were disposable. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have saved them. So much stuff, not to reference The Departed again, but everybody in that movie is just so dislikable, right? Yeah. This this Culkin uh, kid, folks are sick of him. Let's ice this fool. <laughs> ice this little idiot. <laughs> um, no, I gotta hear what Griffin was gonna say about movies on planes. Oh, right. Okay. Um, my, my new jam is watching people watch movies on planes, um, especially if it is a movie that contains uh, sexual intercourse or nudity, just to see how they react to that popping up on their public screen. Like, if if I know that it's about to pop up, I, I was watching a woman watch Up in the Air, and I saw George and Vera Farmiga just flirting. And I was like, I think these two, I think these two kids are about to bone down. And so I watched this um, middle-aged woman watching this movie just because I thought, like, I think a, I think there's about to be like a butt, just like a butt right there. And it's just like, blah, here's a butt. <laughs> and then sure enough, there was a big butt, like full screen butt. And this woman uh, reacted as though like somebody had just like shot her with a rubber band or something, and she like, f- like flexed and like shut her computer screen as fast as possible, which is a really bold move because then you're gonna open up your screen the next time you get your computer out and there's still going to be a butt there. 
I like watching shows like Game of Thrones on planes because it adds this extra level of difficulty. Yeah. I have to be like into it's kind of like uh trying to sneakily watch VH1 Body and Soul when yeah. I was 10 years old in my bedroom, like hoping my parents don't come in. I, I, I like that the added layer of like having to constantly worry about things taking a sexy turn on Game of Thrones. And Game of Thrones won't always warn you. No. Sometimes it's just a hard cut in nudity. You gotta well, be careful. He, here's what they don't tell you. Uh, anything you watch in a plane, it's like international waters. It doesn't count. So what I like to do is, when that happens, I like to just like take my headphones off and yell like, look at this butt! Yeah, like, cool they, butt. There's, they can't, it doesn't register. It doesn't go on my, you know, my permanent record yeah. of like times people caught me looking at butts it's because it's it's international air <laughs> hey, it doesn't that count long, hey, that long hey, scroll yeah <laughs> with a when, when, when i get to heaven and god's like butts. let's check yeah let's go through all the oh there's there's just a blank spot here for five hours and i'm like hey, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah you can't see travis inside is planes. So, <laughs> travis's list is so long that they actually have a second guy after you see St. Peter, he weighs all the good and bad he did in your life. And then um, <laughs> you walk over next door to the next podium. Yeah. And it's just Dr. Buttcheek. And he's got crazy glasses. <laughs> yeah. and he's got one of those beer helmets. And he just goes through all the time. People caught you looking at butts. See, this is just another example of how I am the Dan McCoy of my brother, my brother. I'm sure. Looking at butts. There's a... um. I'm just not thinking about it. Uh, Up in the Air is a pretty whack movie to watch on an airplane. <laughs> yeah. If, if somebody watched saw me watching Up in the Air on an airplane, I would think I would be worried that they thought I was watching the movie for hot airplane tips. <laughs> <laughs> Um, should we go to the money zone? We've been doing this I forever. I want to watch Saul on an airplane. Okay. And then just every few minutes, just be like, nice. Oh. Nice. Good trap. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Did you see this trap? This guy. He thinks of the most hey. wild traps. Hey, listen, I know I've already asked you this 16 times in this flight, but what would you do if you were, if this, like, what would you do in this one? In this trap, would they you made eat your eat, butt? I was about to say, eat your butt also. I was would literally eat, about to say, eat your butt, Justin. Would you eat your butt so you could get out of the trap? Seriously, I know you haven't answered me before, but like, what would you do? Picture, picture this, there's a bear trap on your butt, right? And you, the only way to get out is you got to chew your own butt off. Would you do it? In hey. this in this trap, they make Why him, are you crying? In this trap, they make him eat his dad right there. <laughs> it's crazy. It's okay. Did you ask the pilot when you... Uh, you said you were going to ask the pilot if he would eat his own butt to get out of a trap. I just want to know what he thinks. You kind of started to go through it out there for a second, Justin. Hey, did you ask the pilot? Did you, did you ask the pilot if he'd eat his own butt? <laughs> I think I'd eat my own butt. I'd eat my butt. Fuck. I'd fucking love to get Bobcat Goldthwait. Can we show. go Bobcat. to the money zone? I'm in hell. I need money. I need Is that Bobcat money. Is Bobcat Goldthwait there? I need, yes, I he's there. Oh, there he's there. And just it's me and Bobcat Goldthwait. I'm right over here in the money zone. I know there's a family member of Bobcat Goldthwait listens to our show. We got the connection. We can make this happen. Is it Jaguar Goldthwait? <laughs> 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 That wasn't a good joke. No trap. No, you no, no. You got me. Yeah. No, but I wasn't. I wasn't ready for it, Griffin. You know how to cut to the core. I know. Room. I actually. Oh. I, I gotta um, confess. Actually, I, I did uh, steal that joke um, from Burt Wonderstone. So I just wanted to get out here. And <laughs>